It's here for Jen. She did a great job. Right. It's not easy, not trust easy. me. And I appreciate you stepping up, Jen. Oh, it's fine. We good? good to go? Okay. Our first scripture reading can be found on page 1077 of the Pew Bible this morning. We're going to 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 9 through 13. Wow, you guys are in fast this morning. I heard an old Lord, though. Hold on. Okay. Amen. We're still old Lorden. Okay. Page 1077. Mm hmm. We're good. 1077. You got it, Joe? All right. Amen. Let's read. You remember our labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you, and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning can be found on page 903. We're coming from Matthew chapter 23, the first 12 verses, verses 1 through 12. Matthew chapter 23, page 903. Amen? Okay, we got no Lord there. Wait for the old Lords to catch the amens. Amen? Okay, let's read. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students." And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you called to be instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. So first thing I want to do is I want to explain what phylacteries are. You're like, what's a phylactery? So in the Old Testament, good morning, Betty. In the Old Testament, they, people were told to keep the word of God before their eyes and to bind them on their bodies so that they would not forget it. So a phylactery is if you've ever seen a Hasidic Jew, a very serious Jew, they have this leather thing they wrap around their hand and then they have a box that they put right between their eyes. In that box is Deuteronomy 4, 6, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one, the Lord is God, and you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's in here. Those are phylacteries. So what Jesus is saying here is that 
the Pharisees were making their phylacteries really big so that people would notice that they were wearing them. And the fringes on their prayer shawls, they were making them very, very long so that as they moved, people would see that they were, oh, they're Pharisees. Oh, hi, Rabbi. God bless you, Rabbi. So that's what he's saying is everything's a show for them. So those are phylacteries. No charge for that. Okay. So the question this morning is, who's your daddy? We know that that's a slang expression that takes the form of rhetorical question. There's no answer to it. It's commonly used as a boastful claim of dominance over the intended listener. Of course, it is an arrogant thing to say to someone, especially if they just lost to you in any kind of competition. Who's your daddy? <laughs> This morning, I will ask it in a different context, and I dare say one that carries much more significance than a one bet or a sports game. When it comes down to asking ourselves, who's my daddy, there's really only two choices. Let's explore some background, shall we? In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus gave many instructions on how we ought to conduct ourselves. Let's take another look at it, but I want to look at it from the message version this time for the purpose of greater understanding. Now, Jesus turned to address his disciples along with the crowd that had gathered with them. The religion scholars and Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. It's all spit and polished veneer. Instead of giving you God's law as food and drink by which you could banquet on God, they package it in bundles of rules and load you down like pack animals. They take pleasure in watching you stagger under these loads and they would not think of lifting a finger to help. Their lives are perpetual fashion shows embroidered prayer shawls one day, flowery prayers the next. They love to sit at the head table at church dinners, basking in the most prominent positions, preening in the radiance of public flattery, receiving honorary degrees, and being called doctor and reverend. Don't let people do that to you. Don't let people do that to you put you on a pedestal like that. You all have a single teacher and you are all classmates. Do not set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. No one else should carry the title of father. You only have one father and he's in heaven. And don't let people maneuver you into taking charge of them. There's only one life leader for both you and them. That's Christ. There's a lot there, but I want to focus on two things, and they're both connected. The critical point that needs attention first are these words. Don't set people up as experts over your life, letting them tell you what to do. Save that authority for God. Let him tell you what to do. In other words, you should not give anyone the power to control your life in that way. Doing so is a different thing, though, from asking for advice or godly counsel. That's two different things. It's a, it, I'm talking about allowing someone full reign over your life to call all the shots. Like you've heard about those cults where the guy claims to be God and, and you have to listen to everything they tell you and... Only God can tell you the correct way to go and the correct way to behave. Don't settle for less than what God would have for you. Now, here's the second part. No one else should carry the title of father. You have only one father, and he's in heaven. In today's world, there are many figures that require you to refer to them as father. The point Jesus was making here is that the Greek word is pater, P-A-T-E-R. And it means not only a male parent, but also an ancestor, a title of honor, the wisdom of one's lineage, 
a leader or a mentor. This is a person whom you have given the control to speak over your life, kind of like a proxy or power of attorney. Jesus is repeating the same thing in different words to drive home the fact that the only one trustworthy enough to be given control of your life is God the Father. Yes, you should honor and obey your earthly parents. That's true. Yes, you should listen to a preacher, a priest, a spiritual father, but only one who preaches and teaches the true word about Jesus. And you won't know that unless you know the word. Amen? But there's another word used to describe the father, and it's used only three times in the New Testament. Does anybody know what that word is? Three times. It's used once by Jesus and twice by Paul. Yeah, a word, yes. No. It's just Abba. Yes. Dancing queen. Yeah, Abba, that's right. Very good, Jen. Abba. Um, let's look at the three scriptures where it's used. First, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When asking for the cup of suffering to pass from him, we read this in Mark. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Now, that word father there, after Abba, was only placed in the scripture to help us understand that word Abba, because it's Aramaic for father. It is a term of endearment. It's someone who knows the person intimately. More accurately, we would say the word daddy. If you go to Israel today and you see kids following after their father, you hear them going, Abba, Abba, wait, Abba. That's what they call their daddy. Jalise was there and she heard it herself. That's what they do. They call their daddies Abba. An Abba is somebody, it's more than a potter. It is one you also have a deep trusted relationship with, one who knows you entirely, who always operates in your best interest. You see, when we have an Abba, we don't need to let anyone be our potter. Does that make sense? All right. A potter is a wise parent that you trust, you obey, you seek for guidance, but Abba is all that and your closest friend, a love relationship so pure and trustworthy, only God fits that title of Abba. Paul explains further the meaning of Abba in the book of Romans and in Galatians. In Romans, he says, for you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by which you cry out, Abba, Father. We have been adopted into God's family. And then again in Galatians, he says, because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. We have been adopted into God's family and given the inheritance of Jesus. We can say Abba, which means dad or pop or whatever term of endearment we may use for a father who is close to us one whom we know intimately, but who knows us even more so. We should know God better than we ever knew our own earthly fathers. It's a love we cannot question like we sometimes do with our earthly fathers. So I ask, who's your daddy? As I said earlier, we have two choices of who our father will be. Jesus in John chapter eight, when he was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said this, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Now, the slave doesn't remain in the house forever, but the son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are seeking to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak of the things which I have seen with my father. Therefore, you also do the things which you heard from your father. 
So now you can imagine the Jewish people around Jesus didn't appreciate him inferring that his father was different than theirs. So they objected. It's like they didn't know God the father of Abraham as he knew God, Abba. So this is what they said to him. Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you are Abraham's children, do the deeds of Abraham. But as it is, you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham didn't do that. You are doing the deeds of your father. They said to him, we were not born as a result of sexual immorality. We have one father, and that's God. The gathering insisted that God was their father, but he was their potter, their figurehead. He wasn't their Abba. As the, at this point in the story, Jesus had enough of being diplomatic, and it was time to state it plainly. He said, if God were your father, you would love me because I came forth from God and I am here. For I have not even come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It's because you cannot listen to my word. Then Jesus let them have both barrels. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of any sin? If I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? The one who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. So all these folks are saying God's their father, but in reality, they may have descended from the potter, Abraham, but their Abba, their daddy, was Satan. When you choose to call someone father and give them authority over you, if we give that authority to Satan, then we are of the devil, not of the one true God. We cannot have two Abba fathers, nor can we serve two gods. It's God, the creator, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or not. A lot of people say, well, I don't choose Satan as my daddy, but I don't choose God either. But if you don't choose God, then you have chosen Satan by default because there is no other choice. Who's your daddy? So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. Jesus said, I in him and he in me. In Christ alone can you have the relationship with God, the Abba, Father. At the end of our gospel reading this morning, Jesus told us how to ensure that we have the right Father. This is from the message again. Do you want to stand out? Then step down. Be a servant. If you puff yourself up, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Don't try to be something you're not, because who you are is great. God made you exactly the way you are. And in case nobody ever told you, God does not make mistakes. You are exactly as you should be. Jesus said, but if you're content to simply be yourself, your life will count for plenty. Who is yourself? Well, simply put, it's who you are in Christ, the one that God intended you to be. God knew and knows that in our human nature, we would all go astray, be enticed by worldly influences, serve other gods temporarily. Do I need to give examples? Okay. Money, cell phones, TV, internet, movie stars, heroes, psychics, Sense, crystals, gems, stones, sexuality, addictions, transcendental meditation, drugs, or alcohol. Just to name a few. Basically, anything or everything, anything or everything that we give more time and attention to than Jesus. 
anything and everything. This is why God never stops striving after our souls and why there had to be a plan of salvation. You see, that's the good news. The good news is that no matter how badly we mess up or go astray, up to this very moment, all God wants is for us to stop, turn around, and desire to have him be our daddy right now. Don't worry if you've gotten caught up on, that, on all that worldly stuff. Because Jesus said earlier in John chapter 8, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We shall know the truth, because God's word is truth. Jesus is not only God's word, but he is the way, the truth, and the light. We shall be set free from all bondage to whatever it is that has us bound up. Addiction, illness, depression, emotional concerns, physical, mental, spiritual, shame, fear, anxiety, anything and everything. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. Once you know the truth, you have no choice but to be free. So who's your daddy? I hope we have the same father today. No matter what your experience have been with an earthly father or a parent, can you just believe that your heavenly father infinitely multiplies every good quality that they ever have or had? Can you believe that? That he is a million times greater than any earthly father you ever knew. By faith, we are all descendants of Abraham. But Abraham was not God, nor is Satan God. A lot of people think that God and Satan are these two equal forces fighting for you. No. Satan was created just as we were. He is not equal to God in any way. There is but one God. God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who was and is and is to come, the Abba Father, the great I am. Is he your daddy? Amen? Amen.